Oh my god, I was filming for like 10 minutes talking to the camera and none of it filmed. Um, but anyway, we'll use that as a sample run and I'm going to nail this video now. Okay. How are you going everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, if you don't know, and I'm from Melbourne's Vegan on Instagram. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to go vegan and some tips for staying motivated. So first of all, if you're going to be trying out veganism for the first time, it's important to establish why you wanna go vegan. So you might wanna go vegan for the ethical side of things. So you don't like the way that animals are treated, you don't wanna support animal cruelty, and you don't think that animals should die to be on your plate. That is the kind of ethical kind of side of things. A good resource if you want more information on that, I would head to James Aspie's Instagram. I'll put it here or put a link in the caption for him. But he's amazing for any kind of ethical learning that you wanna do. You might wanna go vegan for, the, for environmental reasons. So, you know, the fact that livestock is one of the leading contributors to global warming. So another good resource for that would be Simon Hill or Plant Proof. He's got an awesome podcast where he gets heaps of different uh, environment scientists. I don't, don't know what the actual term is for that. Is it an environmental science scientist? I don't know, but like a lot of scientists on there who talk, he talks thoroughly through all, all like sustainability, what's the most sustainable diet. Um, hint, hint, it's being vegan. Um, but yeah, that's a really good resource for that. Or you might want to go vegan for your health. So Simon Hill, again, Plant Proof on Instagram. He does a really awesome job at translating scientific literature into information that any person can understand and read. Um, so check him out on Instagram and he's got a lot of, lot of awesome podcasts with doctors and nutritionists as well about plant-based diet and everything that you should be covering in that. Um, so yeah, usually it's for either ethics, the environment or for your health. And usually with most people that go vegan, they start off for one reason and then they end up being interested in all three. And for me personally, I started off going vegan for ethical reasons and I ended up being totally enlightened and shook and just amazed at how much I didn't know about the world and going vegan taught me so much about the environment and my health as well as the ethical side of things so that might happen to you too. You may become enlightened, just warning you. And so one of the most important things about going vegan is realizing that you don't have to totally flip your life upside down straight away and go vegan cold turkey and eliminate everything just like that. Especially when it comes to things like clothes, like I still have woolen clothes and the le leather shoes that I've owned from before I was vegan and I just don't see the merit in throwing those out because I'm vegan. It's a lot more sustainable and economical to hold on to things until they're actually ready to part ways with you. Um, and that's what most vegans do anyway. With all the vegans that I talk to and all the vegan Facebook groups, I mean, um, it's actually like a common knowledge that we don't, we're not expected to not own anything that has a bit of wool in it or has a bit of leather on it. Like people will still, and I do still buy wool from op shops because that's not technically um, contributing to supply and demand. So if you have all this, all these animal, all these clothes that are made from animals, <clears throat> Don't feel like you need to just throw them out. And the same with all your beauty products or um, all your cosmetics and, and things like that. There's no need to just throw it out because it's vegan. Just use it up and then while you're in the process of using that up, you can do some research and find another vegan, a vegan replacement for it. Um, but yeah, don't think that you need to flip everything upside down and make this big drastic change overnight because that will make it a lot harder to sustain your goal and you might become overwhelmed. Um, so yeah, try and take it slow because there's no rush and yeah. So I think what people should focus on when they're deciding to go vegan first is worrying about what's on their plate. And by that I mean slowly eliminating meat and animal products off your plate and replacing them with plants. And again, I actually don't really like to use the word eliminating like I just did then because you're not actually really eliminating or restricting what you can eat. You're actually opening up your world to so many more insane options. Like I eat 10 million times more diverse foods now that I'm vegan from as opposed to before I was vegan. Because say I would make a lasagna, I would always make lasagna with beef. But now as a vegan, I have the option to make my lasagna with lentils, with beans, with um, quinoa, with just veggies. Like you actually find so many innovative ways to change up your cooking and it is so much 
There's so many more options as a vegan as opposed to not being a vegan. It's actually so weird, but yeah. Don't think of it as you are going to be restricting yourself and not having a lot to eat because you're actually just going to be learning so much about all these different species of plants and things that you can eat and it's actually a very, it's actually really exciting and not only do you discover so much more but you notice internally when you stop eating meat and you start including these more fibrous foods like beans and lentils and things like that you just feel so much lighter and you have so much more energy because it's so much easier for your body to break down plants than it is to break down a corpse. Um, so yeah, that's all on that bit. And so another thing you might be thinking is I don't want to eat tofu because tofu is just this little white gross sponge kind of thing and it hasn't got any flavor. But meat is actually exactly the same because you think about like boiled chicken or just chicken in general, you don't eat chicken just by itself it always is usually and with all meats actually everything's always flavored with spices or it's marinated in sauces or it's covered in herbs and guess what those are all vegan because they're all made from plants so just remember that that it's all about how you cook it it's all about how you flavor it with pants uh, pants with plants um there's so many amazing ways to eat tofu and it actually it's I used to think that tofu was so gross, but now that I've learned how to cook it, I am obsessed with it. You can make scrambled eggs out of tofu. You can replace pretty much the meat, cons the meat component of any dish with tofu. You'll become obsessed with it as soon as you learn how to cook with it, I promise you. But yeah, what else was I going to say? Say you decide to go vegan and you are, because this is what happened to me. I decided to go vegan and then like, two or three days into me being vegan, I was walking through the food court at Chadston, which is a shopping center, and I was like thinking, oh fuck, I really feel like getting a boost with dairy in it. What I did was I just imagined the cow on the other end and what happened to the cow for, that meant that I got to drink its breast milk, and that immediately made me realize, no, a five minute meal that caused this living being so much pain is not, um, is not worth is not worth it. Another big thing that people have a problem with when they try and go vegan is that they're worried about going to like family events and things like that. And all you really need to do is just kind of be open with your family about why you're deciding to go vegan. And if they don't understand it, just give it time. Like my family was pretty accepting of it, but at the start I could tell they didn't really think that I was going to keep at being vegan because I was like a KFC loving, McDonald's loving, like everything meat and dairy, cheese loving, chocolate loving enthusiast. Like I loved and like I just loved that kind of food so much. But um, and so when I said that I was going vegan, they didn't really pay attention to it. But over a few months, they got a lot more understanding about it. And um, what I just did was I made sure that I just bought my own dish to family things so that I had something to eat and I would make sure that it tastes delicious so that I could share with other people and show them how amazing vegan food tastes. And like, if you don't want any conflict about it, just try and go about it in like a non-argumentative way because like some, you're always gonna get people that are going to be a huge smart ass about it. But if you can just kind of like dodge that, not let it, not really let it affect you because like people just have, people find it really hard to comprehend being vegan and they're just not going to understand it. Some people, there's no point in arguing with them about it and it's just not really worth the battle, especially about like a family event or something like that. So with things like that, just like, just don't even listen to it. Just be nice about it. And like at the end of the day, you're trying to do something really good for your health or for the planet or for the animals and like someone's opinion and someone's thought of you doesn't really matter in the scheme of things when you're actually like doing such amazing things for your health, the environment and the animals. So don't let that get to you. Okay, let's talk about nutrition when it comes to being a vegan because a lot of people will try and tell you that a vegan diet is not a healthy diet and that it's very restrictive and that you miss out on a lot of important nutrients. People that have no idea about nutrition will just tell you that you need protein, this macronutrient, protein, 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 protein. But there's so much more to nutrition than just protein and there's so much protein in so many plants and it's pretty much impossible. I've never heard of anyone have a protein deficiency. Um, like there's a very, very small amount of people with that kind of problem. It's all these people that like work at the gym and uh, personal trainers and things like that who are 
whose jobs are to help you build muscle, who think that getting as much protein in as possible is the key to health. Um, and that is not true. That's the key to building muscle, but not everyone's trying to build muscle. What is most important is getting micronutrients in. And of course, protein is important. Like you do need to get a good amount of protein in, but it's not nearly as close to what all these people say that you should be getting in. So don't worry about the protein side of things because like all the lentils, all the beans, all the pasta, and all these vegan replacement foods, like fake meats and, and vegetables. Vegetables have so much protein in them. Like there's more than enough protein in just whole foods. So don't worry about the protein side of things too much because it's not actually as important as what a lot of people try and make out for it to be. What is really important in a diet is getting in a lot of micronutrients. So all your vitamins and minerals, things like B12 and iron. Yes, they are a little bit harder to get on a plant-based diet, but I was also low in these nutrients when I was not vegan. Um, but I will leave a link below to my two favorite supplements for these. It's best to have them in liquid form. It's easier for our body to absorb when they are um, in liquid form. Another problem that you might run into when you first go vegan is trying to find a really nice plant-based milk. The thing is with plant-based milk, there's like at least, I think there's probably at least like 10 different brands of soy milk at the supermarket. And there's probably like three or four brands that actually taste really good. And every different brand of soy milk tastes totally different to the other one. So don't, if you try one soy milk and you don't like it, that doesn't mean that all soy milks taste like shit because some of them do taste like shit, but other ones taste really similar and replicate dairy milk really well. So for soy milk, I would recommend either Happy Happy Soy Boy, Bon Soy, or even the organic Woolies home brand is really good and really creamy. Um, and also the Aldi organic soy milk is really good as well. And they're really, really cheap and they actually go pretty well in coffee too. But if you are wanting a good milk for coffee, Happy Soy Boy is a good soy milk. My personal favorite milk for coffee is oat milk. Minor figures or Oatly are unreal. They're amazing. Definitely give those oat milks a go. And if you're wanting a really good plant-based milk just for your cereal or your porridge or things like that, I would recommend the Australia's own organic almond milk. It's got really clean ingredients, hasn't got too many additives or things like that. And that is what I would recommend for smoothies cereal and porridge. And so I think I've nearly covered pretty much everything. I'm gonna finish off the video by telling you all the amazing things that you can still eat as a vegan. So you can still eat Oreos. Oreos are accidentally vegan in Australia. I don't think they're vegan in America, but I can't imagine anyone from America watching my video. But Australian Oreos are accidentally vegan. You can go to McDonald's and you can get a hamburger meal without the meat, ask to remove the meat and fill it up with hash brown patties and barbecue sauce. That is a really amazing vegan option for you at McDonald's. You can go to Hungry Jack's and get the Rebel Whopper and it tastes exactly like what I remember a normal beef Whopper to taste like. It is so good. Just make sure that you ask for the vegan mayo and vegan cheese. That is oh, amazing. Um, you can still eat hot chips. And for me, that's the most important thing. Can't go wrong with hot chips. You can still go to Hunky Dory's and get vegan fish. So you can get vegan fish from a lot of places actually. There's a lot of places that do fake meat in Suvlaki's. Um, there's a place in Bentley, or East Bentley, I think it's Bentley, called Alati, and they do the most amazing vegan euros. It tastes like the real meat euros that I used to have when I was in Greece a few years back before I went vegan. Um, what else is there? You can, oh my God, there's so many amazing fake meat patties for burgers. And there's also a really amazing uh, vegan Big Mac type sauce from Coles. And it's like, it's only like $2.70 for a bottle. And oh my God, it's so good. Uh, I went through a phase where I was eating so many burgers just because I love that sauce so much. Um, so you can still make yourself a Big Mac at home. Oh, it's so good. You can still obviously have your Thai, you can have burritos, you can have, um, what else can you have? You can have chicken parmesanas. The Coles, Coles and Woolworths both sell an amazing vegan chicken parmesana. Um, there's so much you can eat. You can still make every single of your favorite cupcakes and cakes. You can, I've got the best sticky date pudding recipe on my website and also on my Instagram. 
Um, what else? There's honestly so much, so just don't stress, okay? You've got this. Going vegan is going to be the best thing you ever did for your body, for the environment, for the animals. Honestly, it's such a no-brainer. If you have any problems, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to message me or comment below. It would be amazing if we could start like a little community in the comments where we can all help each other if you're trying to go vegan. Or even just send me a DM. Like I'm always open and wanting to help anyone with this kind of stuff. So don't stress. There's so many resources out there. Any question you have, hit me up, type it in on Google. Any recipe you want, type it in on Google or ask me. So don't worry, you have got this and you're gonna kill it and your body is going to be singing to the Lord above for how amazing you are going to feel. So that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed. Um, let me know what you think about this video and I hope it's been helpful in some way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next time.